Welcome to Ladder to the Sun, Hugh. Um, before we dig into the sort of deep mental issue things we're going to be discussing today, tell us a little bit about how uh, how you got into music and such things. Well, really, it was um, uh, I guess uh, I'd been matey with what I would call kind of like proper musicians because I don't, I mean, I don't play well. I mean, I don't even sing very well. But I, I you know, I do write some lyrics. I get some tune or ideas and. Um, uh, I can sort of sort of sing, if you like. <laughs> so I, I and, and I play a wee bit of acoustic guitar pretty badly. So <laughs> I, I do a bit of that. And it was really uh, meeting both Muzz and Sai again that allowed me to kind of like, you know, because they can actually make things happen in a in a, a musical instrument way. So, so that was a good way for you to yeah. kind of take your ideas and yeah, actually yeah. like That's manifest right. them. Manifest them basically. Yeah, because I don't have the skills as a as a musician, if you like, mm. to, to do it. just kind of like there just like obviously like little ideas and things yeah like that. it, it was just kind it, of swam it, around swam around basically yeah that's the truth yeah yeah so your vertigo rising project tell us a little bit about well that. i mean i'd ideas for rock songs for quite some time but um i guess that kind of came out of like sort of uh i mean it sounds a bit cliched but i literally woke up one morning i thought that's quite a good name for like <laughs> For a band and it was kind of just prior to to like all the stuff with the credit crunch and mm -hmm. like um in some respects quite a lot of partial upheaval as well so it, you know it seemed to sort of fit and and and, and also well it's kind of to me it suggests sort of like panic and and, and kind of like um a, you know a degree of chaos and uh and and i kind of felt like i was kind of living through that and, and in some respects you know there's all I guess there's, well, the world seemed to be kind of going through that, you know, in some respects. Although I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, that 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 seemed to be kind of portrayed in the media, so like the TV. You were drawing parallels yeah. in your own thing. Yeah, from it's what was my own, my own kind of inner world to to mm -hmm. what was happening outside. like inevitably some of them are just like a personal experience and expression of my personal emotions and some of them are are kind of like to do with um i guess how i see the world and, and kind of like mysticism and stuff as well or kind of you know uh, um in terms of some sort of search for like i don't know like uh inner peace and dealing with your own demons if so you're you drawn like. from a whole bunch of different yeah directions. yeah 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 so 
um, just, you know, you could tell us a bit about how um, you and um, Muds from the Plastic Adults and yeah. Sai happened to get together and form the Bube. How did that all Well, the arise? initial idea came from Muzz uh, himself. Uh, he, he liked the idea of Bube as a band name and it refers to the bub- bubonic plague. Um, and, and and I think it kind of maybe says quite a lot about our kind of common mindset in, in, in as much as, well, I mean, I'll just speak for myself, feeling quite diseased <laughs> and sort of... Um, um, in, so, in some respects, kind of alienated from the world, and uh, and while you know, Muzz does, uh, or M- well, Muzz sort of created the the initial ground rules as far as I I mm-hmm. can recall, and then we kind of met up with Simon. Uh, in as much as when when Muzz, when I say Muzz created the initial, he wanted something kind of absurdist and and sort of um, maybe a bit maniacal and daft, but. You know, actually, quite a lot of the bube stuff is quite dark and and quite tw- twisted as well. It might be sort of humorous, but in a way, but some of it is kind of pretty pretty sort of horrible as well. I would say. So you, you know? had like the ground rules in and the kind of ideas that you had. Yeah, well, essentially, I I, I I was taking care of like singing and lyric writing, and and Muzz was taking care of playing the instruments and and playing the um, yeah playing the instruments and coming up with the tunes if you like, and also. I think Simon was in charge of like programming or engineering the whole thing. Yeah, there's um, we want to be fat, which 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 is like <laughs> uh, it kind of came from like watching. Um, well, it just kind of comes from like the, the culture we live in, which is which is about keeping yourself kind of like you know slim, healthy, and you get your kind of like Scottish executive adverts, which are really worthy. But I kind of found myself just sort of sitting sitting there watching it all, just wanting to. To be fat, so it was like a rebellion against and ugly. The it's, it's like an inane rebellion against all of that. I mean, that that's really kind of like worthy, but it just sort of like, you know, you know, I can understand why if if you're sitting in an office, you want to eat a pack of chocolate to just yeah. to escape yeah. from like your 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 PC and like whatever you're crawling through that day. I mean, maybe people aren't, but that was my my way of relating to it. So we we just wanted to be be fat. So it was a way but to just sport. sort of work all of your current. Thoughts pointless rebellion. Just, yeah, point it towards something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In, huh. but, but particularly infantile kind of like rebellion. You know, like in the face of all of that. You know. <laughs> So uh, you got involved with uh, Simon on a bit more of a solo project yeah. kind of together. How did that all work out and things? Um, it's worked out in terms of the stuff we've done. It's worked out all right, I think. You know, I mean, obviously, like you know, Simon we need to sort of like comment on on what he thinks of it all. Um, yeah, I, I mean, again, um, in, well, in terms of sort of like say my input, the, the, the subject matter kind of remains the same. Like sort mm-hmm. of struggling with your own kind of like. I guess inner demons. That's kind of like um, ladder to the sun, although it's kind of more kind of projected onto another person. Where I'm wanting them to sort of uh, escape their inner demons and, and kind of like be in love with me, as if I could be kind of like in love with them, mm-hmm. which I, th- I felt I could be at that particular point. No, you know, you know that all these things are kind of changeable. And, and there, I think there were a couple of other tracks we worked on individually, um, which whose names I can't remember, <laughs> but it seemed to work out okay. Yeah, 
you know. So, so you were taking like the sort of base ideas from Buben, like direct and well, no, no, kind of no, they were kind of separate from Buben in as much as, um, like, say, um, um, you know, lyrically, um, um, the. They're more straightforward, more straightforward, more maybe, more, maybe, maybe uh, just less twisted, I would say. Mm-hmm. And, and so, more so, so, straight so, so, so more straight line and, and less absurdist. Oh, and so, yeah, yeah. So it's just more of a straightforward, heartfelt like feeling as, as opposed to music, which, was, which was much more um, twisted and, 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 and infantile and, and absurd. <laughs> Thank you very much for having you here today, Hugh. Um, Thank you, Cammy. So Thanks very much, man. That well, was nice. Don't be like the rest. Find a way to shine. And I will make you mine. Put your love to the test. Don't be like the rest. Find a way to shine. And I will make you mine. Right. Um... So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to express emotional and mental health if you're in love with somebody and, uh, you know, you can write, you can feel really inspired and write songs uh, about that. Um, but then if you find that mental health issues are taking over and, um, you know, you're, you're getting distressed in various ways and uh, you end up on prescriptions that you're, you're not used to taking because of a relationship breakdown or a job breakdown or uh, getting treated unfairly by, uh, you know... Um, the, the social security, anything like that, um, then it helps you, it helps you, uh, like I say, relate to causes which, um, you know, you can then um, express and let, you can let other people know you can do this as well, you know, instead of just um, um, write, writing about, about whatever. Obviously, if that gets too serious, then, you know, you, you get a scenario where you feel that you have to um, you know, try to make yourself laugh or, or create something which will make other people laugh, which, because that, that can be good therapy as well, you know, um, um, sort of doing kind of wind-ups in music and, uh, you know, sort of comedy lyrics and stuff like that. Um, uh, that that can also be um, really helpful, um, you know, as a kind of alternative to, you know, always, like, slogging so on like, about, you know, the same Almost like things stand-up and, music and stuff, like... Uh, well, something like that, aye, aye. Project the Plastic Adults. Um, how was that as a sort of therapeutic route? Um, well, I, I got two friends that I'd known since uh, they were fif- I was fifteen. Um, uh, involved, one plays the drums, one plays the bass, and uh, I got them together in a real rush for uh, the mid nineties city of Edinburgh punk festival things at the Tap of Lorison, and. Um, um, because I was like raging about the way that I'd been treated in certain jobs, um, and um, raging about, uh, well, you know, men's position in society as as I was seeing it, and uh, um, just basically getting done in by you know the authorities that I, I mentioned earlier on, um, and uh, so it was, it was a bit of a kind of primal scream when we first got it together. But you know, um, you know, over over time, you can sort of refine. Uh, what it is you're saying and um, look into other avenues, um, things that you feel aren't getting covered or that you're not hearing anywhere else. You can, mm. you can uh, obviously, you you can um, you know start writing about about things things like that that, that, that bother you that so you, like, you feel need to be said. <laughs>
I, when I was younger, it was uh, I never really considered um, bringing any kind of political things into it. But um, what's your take on the way that you brought it in? Um, well, uh, I mean that's just the lyrics. I mean, so if somebody puts um, somebody's song on at a party or whatever, and everyone's sitting about chatting, drinking, and whatever, uh, you know, then. Um, it's just a song, right? But um, you, you um, the way that you develop your your, your music, you, you might find that you're uh, uh, choosing certain chords, uh, chord changes, um, certain harmonies, um, certain melodies, which you feel match the um, uh, the idea that you're trying to put across in the lyric, or you could create something completely new out of the two ideas, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not really that much of a fan of bands who just make a total racket and you can't hear their their lyrics and ever because it's just like, well, you know. Um, you so know. it's just as important to um, get the melody saying what you're trying to say as well as the lyrics, you know. Yeah, well, I've I've always, I've always kind of liked making making tunes, and I and I know um, through other people's influence in the past where um, I've I've started doing things that are like more atonal. Um, experimental, which isn't really what I'm into, but um, you know, uh, a, like a young musician can feel that they're, um, they're, they're they've got to keep up with guys older than them yeah. that they might be playing with because you think, oh, I better learn how to do like you know seven four or nine eight on the drums or you know be able to like do some weird sort of um, you know harmony. not a lot being covered like it is now so what was it that was really drawing you in that was giving you something to speak about well i mean me and my friends like mostly came through the sort of punk scene and mm. uh, no offense to them because i know quite a lot of them but i mean they, they still look like you know it's they're, they're, they're dressed like it's 1982 you know mm. um and you know in a, in a way they haven't entirely moved on from a uh, um, the, the same old issue. So um, you got together with um, Simon and his pal to do the bube. How did that come about? Yeah, well, um, me and Mr Turner and Hugh, um, we basically, uh, we kind of went down to see him one day and just kind of like railroaded him into agreeing to meet up every <laughs> tea time uh, on a Saturday, uh, um, every Saturday on a tea time. And um, uh, just we got a bit wrecked and, and like threw a song together and it was basically done in an hour or, uh, an hour or two uh, and we were, we were trying to make ourselves laugh as well as hopefully making other people laugh just because it's just um, just a bit just a bit mental and the, the album that we, that we got together um, you know um, that, that basically was done over like you know 12 13 weeks so it's just a basically a good laugh that turned into something well productive. yeah but we had to do it as a kind of therapy mm. to you know because you know it was so like uh, absurd stuff like this for a while just like do it and put it out there and uh, uh, you know I mean we're making that stuff um, um, you know during times where we, we could be quite distressed or quite disturbed because of things we had going on inside so you us. had a lot of things to so, put into it. Aye, we were trying to do that in spite of mm -hmm. you know um, to you know try and give ourselves a laugh you know. 
so that that basically uh, wraps it up. You know, I'm, I'm uh, I, you know, I try to get involved in a few different projects, um, um, and, and music seems to be something that you know I'm I'm, I'm going to continue to to do in my life. Uh, and um, you know, it, it can be useful in a, in a number of ways. You know, um, and obviously, I love other people's music. Certain music, if it if it strikes you, if it hits you for a certain reason, and it kind of sets you free a bit, then you know that's that's musical therapy. You know what I mean? Thanks for having you, Muzz. Been a good night. <laughs> and uh, thank you for having me as well. That's, no that sounds a bit rude. Okay, we're here with uh, Simon Turner today, talking. Uh, we're on Ladder to the Sun, talking a bit about um, music and its uses uh, in relation to mental health. Um, what's your take on all of the um, th- items surrounding such things? Um, well, I started off playing in bands when I was like about 17, 18, kind of like singing, frontman type shit, writing my own lyrics and kind of expressing the kind of values that I held strong to me at the time, which were kind of slightly kind of out of sync with the rest of the world as far as I was concerned at the time um, which kind of led on to a sort of alternative lifestyle and kind of like playing in bands that kind of got progressively kind of more experimental and more kind of like theatrical as time went on Um, in those days I wasn't so much in kind of respect of like expressing feelings and emotions you know like depression anxiety all that sort of stuff using it as a release to uh, kind of get my feelings out now kind of through through having started sound engineering at home just out of my own interest in the last couple of years um, I've taken on a few projects and kind of been doing a lot of stuff with audio and recording stuff live and um, you know just trying to get my hand in really with, with kind of like you know the other side of things so I can potentially produce my own my own kind of tunes <laughs> like I kind of had um, like a, a period of kind of like wild partying and stuff for, for many years you know after these bands and then um, you know that kind of led to the mental health problems and the kind of like depression anxiety kind of turmoil you know getting to too many crossroads in the head kind of thing but you know through listening to music that, that other people had kind of put up to kind of do that anyway and it was always n- never really a problem with me you know but um, kind of now I'm finding it kind of like after being on medication and stuff on and off over the last sort of four or five years it's quite good to get a release uh, you know charging charging up the sound and getting some stuff out <laughs>
So you would say that um, a sort of new direction with um, accessibility to your home studio and things like that is kind of like put older things into perspective so you've been able to take those things and move them in a new way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the recordings we did when we were in bands when we were younger, um, like the one you heard there was, was um, you know, they were in professional studios, so we, we had somebody who was doing it that knew what they were doing, so we were going to get a good sound because we were quite passionate about what we were doing at the time, you know, as you are when you're kind of 18, 19, but um, now I'm kind of like a bit burnt out and a bit kind of like, I don't know, the, 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 not, not all the chemicals are, are kind of floating around in my head to keep me happy on a constant <laughs> basis, you know, plus I do things that kind of potentially lead me to being more depressed than I should be, you know, so, you know, kind of like drinking or, you mm-hmm. know, kind of um, recreational drugs or whatever, um, which I don't really do that often, but um, I'm trying to concentrate on, on getting the, the music together and, and, and just any experience really, you know, I've recorded a few live gigs recently and stuff as well, so getting bits of equipment, trying to build up a wee studio, you know, I'm decorating my flat at the moment, so once that's done, hopefully I'll have a wee which is probably a good wee release as well just getting a new change of scene some things coming up before I don't know beginning of the year or around the beginning of the year after the festive season's over maybe get some stuff up and running the second Bube album and stuff like that you know so you're talking about Bube there um, how does uh, how did all that come about how did uh, how, what was that like for you oh uh, well um, I'd been funny about with the, the studio engineering stuff at home for about seven months or something um, my production skills weren't that fantastic you know I mean I knew how to you know, plug things into the the right desk to get the sound to come out to record it kind of thing, you know, like we've been learning here. But um, basically, um, I got together with Muzz at an Exploited gig at um, Carlton Studios, and Hugh was with him. And uh, Hugh I'd met many years ago, once or twice. Uh, He used to do work with the Joyriders many years ago. And Muzz was like, you know, I'll come back, you know, we'll we'll sit about. And he's friends with uh, my, my mate's big brother, who's like a music journalist. So we got together with him and we just had a laugh. You know, they were they basically plummeted me and said they had these ideas and they wanted to get together. So, like, they, they both turned up on a Saturday night one night um, with, like, loads of legal highs and, and bottles of cider. <laughs> and uh, we sat for two hours and recorded the first track, which I think was We Want to Be Fat or might have been One Armed Girl. Like, But they're, they're two of the better tracks on the album, as far as I'm concerned. sort of came to and we did it every Saturday night for about 10 weeks till we had an album and um, did the album um, probably giving away about 100, 120 copies of it for free so, so it was just a small home project that kind of snowballed into kinda something kind of snowballed into it yeah or such you know my spaces whatever for these bands yeah yeah um, uh, Bube uh, we're under uh, www.myspace.com slash we are Bube all one word that's B-U-B-E uh, you'll get all the Bube stuff on there probably most of the album I think so you know effectively we're giving it away free but it's on there as well <laughs> um, my own uh 
personal electronic stuff and that is down under www.myspace.com slash J3ST8R, which is like Jester, but with a three and an eight instead of the E's. Um, the name's actually Cyanide Pram, I go under, but um, Jester's a link kind of thing. You're right. You're right.